Dr. Fauci, thanks so much for joining us. I wanted to begin by asking you about this CDC study into the Delta variant, and it seems to raise some really concerning questions here about the probability of fully vaccinated people potentially being able to transmit this virus. What more can you tell us? Well, w there are a couple of things that have evolved over the last couple of months in appreciation the full extent of the impact of the Delta variant. First thing is that the Delta variant is substantially more efficient in transmitting from person to person when you compare it with the Alpha variant, the one that had been dominant in the United States before, and gradually we've reached the point where the Delta variant is now between 80 and 90 percent dominant in the United States. So with that as a background, what we're seeing is that unlike the situation with the Alpha variant, when a person who's vaccinated gets a breakthrough infection, which is a natural thing to see because no vaccine is 100 percent effective, when one would get infected as a breakthrough infection with the Alpha variant, and you measured the level of virus in the nasopharynx of the vaccinated person who happened to get infected and compare it to the level of virus in the nasopharynx of an unvaccinated person who happened to get infected. The level of virus was much lower in the nasopharynx of the vaccinated person, strongly suggesting that it would be much less likely for that person to transmit infection to an unvaccinated person. That's changed because now with Delta, we know that we're getting breakthrough infections with Delta. But when you measure the level of virus in the nasopharynx of a vaccinated person who has a breakthrough infection with Delta, the level of virus in the nasopharynx is high and equivalent to the level of virus in the nasopharynx of an unvaccinated person which is strongly suggested that they as easily transmit as an unvaccinated person. And the reason that that has led to the conclusion and the recommendation of the CDC is given the fact that even though it's a small fraction of people get these breakthrough infections, it is very clear now that they can transmit the infection to others. So in order to be doubly safe, particularly for those people who have people in their own household who may be elderly, unvaccinated children, people with underlying diseases, the new recommendation of the CDC, the former recommendation was, if you're vaccinated, you don't need to wear a mask either indoors or outdoors. That's changed. Now, even if you're vaccinated, when you go indoors in a public place, in a region of the country that has either a high or a substantial level of viral dynamics, you should wear a mask. And we have that by a color code. In the map of the United States, the CDC has blue, yellow, orange, and red. If you're in an orange and red zone, then you should be wearing a mask indoors, even if you are vaccinated. Knowing that vaccinated people are likely to have much less severe symptoms or even be asymptomatic, uh, even if they are infectious, what should people be thinking about when it comes to getting tested if they're fully vaccinated or the need to isolate if they've been around people who are confirmed positive cases? Uh, the former, but not the latter. In other words, we are recommending now that when you do come into contact, we used to say if you're vaccinated and you come into contact with an infected person, you don't need to do anything. You don't need to test. You don't need to... Mm -hmm. Uh, isolate. Now that's changed. Now the recommendation is that you should be tested, even if you're vaccinated, when you come into known contact with an infected person. You don't have to quarantine, you don't have to isolate, but you should be tested. Uh, so I have to ask you, there's actually been a policy change in part of Canada where the province of Alberta has said that they're ending the mandatory uh, isolation requirement, both for people who test positive and for those close contacts. Uh, are there concerns about that sort of policy shift, which perhaps may become more commonplace? And what are the implications of that kind of policy shift? No, I mean, I, I would think that the Canadian health authorities who I've dealt with for a while are very good. <laughs> they, they do know what they're doing. So I believe if they made that policy shift, Given the dynamics of the outbreak in Canada, I would imagine that that's perfectly compatible with the thing to do. So I, I, don't, I, I wouldn't be able to comment one way or the other on that. 
Uh, you know, another issue that's sort of been uh, commonplace in many countries, of course, is the issue of border controls. But we're seeing the Delta variant make grounds even in places like Australia that have been very, very strict about border controls and quarantine. Uh, given how easily this spread, are border controls really relevant at this point? You know, I'm not sure I can comment on border controls, but I can tell you something that is quite troublesome with this Delta variant. If allowed to be, it, it's already in over 112 countries. Mm -hmm. So the, the horse is out of the barn, as it were, with regard to Delta. Wherever Delta has been, it invariably is so efficient in transmitting from person to person that it always seems to push out the other variants and become dominant. We've seen that in the United States. A few months ago, it was two, three or so percent. Then it went up to 20, then 50, then 80, and now it's close to 90 percent. It's just a very dominating variant. You know, the vaccination rate in this country has really struggled to get above that 50 percent of eligible people fully vaccinated. Uh, there was so much hope and optimism when these vaccines rolled out at the start of the year. I'm wondering from where you sit, would you have predicted that it would be this much of a struggle to get this much of the American public vaccinated? No, I, I, I was hoping that we would get an enthusiasm that would transcend political ideology, transcend leaning towards one versus the other, depending, you know, where you live and what the general culture is in a particular area. But unfortunately, that's not the case. We did a great job in getting people vaccinated. We now have 70% of the adult population has received at least one dose. We have over 80% of the elderly receiving one dose, close to 90% of them uh, uh, with one dose and about 80% uh, re receiving two doses. So we've done well. But where we've been stuck now is we have about 100 million people who are eligible to be vaccinated who are not getting vaccinated. And we've really got to do anything we possibly can to reach out to them, to get trusted messages, and even, in some respects, to do some local mandating, which we're starting to see in the country. As soon as this vaccine gets the full approval of the FDA, which leads to some legal issues if it isn't fully proven, you're going to see universities, colleges, places of business that are going to require vaccination. Once that happens, you're going to start seeing getting more people vaccinated. What do you blame for the level of hesitancy in this country? Because other westernized, nation, westernized nations now that are surpassing the U.S. You know, still have the same exposure to social media, for example, and anti-vaccine ideology. But is there, is there something different in the U.S. that's made it more difficult here? I think it's no surprise to anyone, certainly across the border, you, you, re, you recognize it, you're close to us, that there's a considerable degree of divisiveness in our country, uh, a very, very sharp political divisiveness. And unfortunately, that spilled over into the public health arena. That should never happen. We have a common enemy, and the common enemy is the virus, not each other. We need to be all pulling together and not have somebody make a decision about a public health matter based on political ideology. There's no place for that. But unfortunately, we are seeing that, and that's too bad. And I think that's one of the major obstacles we're facing. And just as a final question here, has the Delta variant made the politics even more difficult? Because you've got people thinking now that we're taking a step backwards or returning to mask recommendations and mandates, for example, all the issues we dealt with months and months ago. Yeah, it just intensifies things because for the people who are saying that one thing makes a difference, it doesn't make a difference, it adds a lot more confusion to it. I think what people need to do something very simple. We're dealing with a different virus now than we were several months ago. And that being the case, the science evolves, the evidence evolves, and your approach and your guidelines and your recommendations need to evolve. And that's exactly what happened in the United States with the change in the CDC guidelines. Thank you for your time, Dr. Fauci. Thank you very much. It's been good to be with you.